6.1 radian measure. So today I'm going to show you how you work with radians. It's going to be something you're going to do for the rest of your units, the next two chapters on trigonometry. So it's important that you get a really good grasp of this. So a radian measure is defined as the arc length A divided by the radius R of a circle. What I usually do is I get my students to draw a circle, a circle of any size, and I give them a piece of string like this. And I tell them to measure the length of their radius. So you cut a piece of string the length of the radius like that, be exact as you can. And then you put the tip on here and you follow your string around and you find where it's going to end. So that would be right here. And then you join that line to the center of your circle, like this. And that angle in here is one radian. Now, I usually get the students to measure that as best as they can. I give them a protractor. I don't have one of those here. Now that I'm retired, I don't have protractors. But usually they come up with something between maybe 57 to 59 degrees. And um, then I get them to take this piece of string and see how many times it would go across their circle. So we're talking here about the diameter. So if I put a little dotted line here and I say, okay, well, there's one, put it here. That's two. And I'm gonna put another little mark there. And three, and I get to about here. So, it's a little more than three times around. So if you said that was 60 degrees, of course, ooh, it would be something like this. These are equilateral triangles. So if I laid those out and I have 60, 60, 60, I have 180 degrees from here to here, but obviously I'm not going around a circle. So this length from here to here is going to be less than like when you arc it right it's going to be shorter than that so that's why it doesn't go around perfectly and it goes to three here and if you go all the way around you get you'll probably end up about here with a six and the reason that is let's think of something that you do know you know how far it is around a circle you know the circumference of a circle? Circumference, do you remember the formula? And I'll get people that say pi r squared, that's area. Anytime you're squaring something, that's area. Circumference is two pi r. So if I take the circumference of the circle and I divide it by r, which is my radius, two pi r divided by r gives me two pi. So that means all the way around the circle would be two pi radians. And you don't have to write the radians every time, you just say two pi and it's assumed that it's radians. So you know how far it is around the circumference of a circle, two pi r, divide by r and you get two pi. Now how many degrees is it if you spin all the way around once? Now this is something that's been drilled into your head, probably talked about doing a 360, that means you spun around, um, if you're a, a skier or a snowboarder and you do a 360, you know that you've gone all the way around. So 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi. How easy is that? So that means that 180 degrees is going to be half of that, which is pi. So now we have all these measures on our circle. If um, let me just draw, I'm just going to draw it over here a little bit. So if we go around, I'm not going to draw a circle, but we'll talk about it in terms of radians. So if I go from here to here, this is pi radians, and all the way around to this end would be 2 pi radians. So how far is it to 90 degrees then? Well, it's going to be half of pi, right? So this is going to be pi over 2. And how far is it from here all the way around to 270 degrees would be 3 pi over 2. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about all the, um, the kind of basic things that help you to find angles very easily in radian measure. Because if you know, for instance, that half of this again, half of 90, would be pi over 4, right? Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. And 30 degrees would be pi over 6. So let's make a list of these. We're going to have um, pi is 180, pi over 2 is going to be 90, half that again, pi over, well let's do pi over 3 first, pi over, oh sorry I meant 6, pi over 6 is going to be 30 degrees, so all I'm doing is I'm dividing pi, which I know is 180, divided by 60 would be 30 degrees, Pi over 4 is going to give me 45 degrees. Pi over 3 is going to give me 60 degrees. So these are, as you may recognize, these are my special triangles, right? We're going to use those a lot. So I've got all the angles, and now I can figure out if I said, um, what is um, 3 pi over 2? So 3 pi over 2 is going to be 3 times pi over 2, right? So that's going to be 270 degrees. And what if I said, what's, um, what's 5 pi over 6? Well, I know what pi over 6 is. Pi over 6 is 30. So just remember this is like 180 up here. So 180 divided by 60 is 30. And times 5? 30 times 5, 150 degrees. What would, um, let's say, 3 pi over 4 be? 3 pi over 4, well if pi over 4 is 45, 3 pi over 4 is going to be 3 times 45, which is going to be 135 degrees. And let's say I asked you for what is, um, let's go really big, what's 7 pi over 3 going to be? 7 pi over 3, so this is pi over 3, 7 times this, 420 degrees. So it's really easy if you know these sort of basic ones. Once you've got pi, and you can always still figure out what 360 being 2 pi, and then you can figure out these other ones very easily from it. So I told you that when we went around this circle, it went around a little bit more than three times. It actually goes 3.14 times in all those decimals. And you should recognize that as being pi, right? That's pi on a calculator is 3.14. And 2 pi would be 6.28 radians. And remember that this was one radian. So that's when the radius is equal to the arc length. So if the radius is equal to the arc length, you have one radian. So that means that this length was equal to this length. And remember, I showed you if that had been a triangle, this would swing out a little farther, and that would have given you your 60 degrees. So this comes out to approximately 57.3 degrees. So that's one radian. Okay, so let's talk about converting back and forth between radians and degrees. You only really do that in this section, and then um, once you've got that down, you just pretty much work with radians all the time. They'll become second nature to you, just like breathing out and breathing in. So let's say I asked you, um, what is um, 20 degrees? 20 degrees, how many radians is 20 degrees? You could make up a little ratio. So if I said 20 degrees is to 360 degrees, as x is to, what was 360? 2 pi. Okay, so this would be my radians on this side. Right, this is radians over here, and this is degrees over here. So using basic ratios, you can calculate any radian or degree amount. And remember that when you solve a, um, a ratio, you start with the unknown. You go down, up, down. So x is going to be equal to 2 pi times 20 divided by 360. 
So we're multiplying this. Now let's see if we can simplify that, which you should be able to do. So let's divide the 2 into 360. That will give me 180. And I divide the 20 into 180, and that gives me 9. So that's pi over 9. And that should make sense to you as well because pi is 180. 180 divided by 9 is 20 degrees. Now, um, sometimes they show you the radians in like as a decimal. So when you do that, all you have to do is use... Oh, did you see that? See my flashy calculator? This was a, a cover, a plate cover that was given to me by one of my viewers by the name of Chris. Thank you very much for Chris from Ohio who sent this in the mail to me to replace my pretty boring gray one. I love it. Okay, so again, all I have to do now is, oh, my calculator is so bright and clean, I'm going to divide pi. So you find pi in your calculator. Ooh, my vision is not good for close up. Here it is over here. So second function gives me pi divided by 9, and that's going to give me approximately 0.349 radians. Okay, so that's another way of expressing it. Normally you would leave it with pi, but sometimes you might be asked to give it to, you know, three decimal places or something like that. So pi is just your 3.14 and 2 pi is 6.28. Okay, so that's... Um, that's how you switch between radians and degrees. You can make a ratio anytime. The, you can also just do degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180. I like to make the ratios, but you could just write it out like this. Degrees to radians. You multiply by pi over 180. And going the other way, radians to degrees, radians to degrees, you would multiply by the reciprocal. So times 180 degrees over pi. You should put the degrees in here. Okay. Okay, so that's the start of it. Now let's look at some of the word problems that you might want to do. And this has to do with angular velocity and um, arc length. So we're going to use that little formula that we just showed at the beginning that theta is equal to arc length divided by radius and it says the angular velocity of a rotating object is the rate at which the central angle changes with respect to time. Okay, so that's just in the middle. The hard disk of a computer rotates at 7200 revolutions per minute RPMs. If you're old like me you know what RPMs are because you used used to buy records and um, like a small single play record was a 45 and that meant 45 revolutions per minute on your on your um, turntable and if you played it faster they sounded like little chipmunks okay so determine its angular velocity in degrees per second and radians per second so right now I have revolutions per minute so 700 and 7200 revolutions per minute that means I went around 360 degrees 7,200 times, right? Because this is in degrees per second. So remember, this is still minutes. So if I multiply that out, I would get 2,592,000. And this is degrees per minute. But I want it in seconds. So the angular velocity is going to be, whoops, velocity is going to be equal to this 2,592,000. And I have to divide it by 60 to get it per second. And that comes out to 43,200 degrees per second. That's pretty fast, isn't it? Okay, now let's do it in radians per second. So we know how far it is around. So this should be A here, and this will be B. So I have 
7200 this time I'm going to multiply it by what's one all the way around is two pi radians that's a little easier math to do isn't it so you can do that in your head 14,400 pi radians per minute okay don't forget the pi here when you multiply by 2 pi okay so that means the angular velocity is going to be I'm going to take 14,400 pi and I'm going to divide it by 60 and that's going to give me 240 pi radians per second. Okay, and maybe your teacher just uses S here or SEC, I'm not sure, but that's how you would do that. Okay, the last example, Suzette rides a camel located nine meters from the center of the carousel. Okay, so it's not a real camel. It's one of those plastic ones. You're in a little Ferris wheel. If the carousel turns through an angle of 5 pi over 6, determine the length of the arc traveled by the camel to the nearest tenth of a meter. Okay, so 5 pi over 6. So this is 9 meters here. I want you to think about how far 5 pi over 6 would be. So if you remembered, pi over 6 was how many degrees? So 180 divided by 6 is 30 times 5, so 150 degrees. Sometimes it's easier just to convert it very quickly, if you can do that just in your head, and then you don't have to think, ooh, 5 pi over 6, um, that's more than pi over 2, because pi over 2 would be here, 5 pi over 6. Or you could say, okay, let's look at it this way. This is 6 pi over 6, isn't it? That's 6 pi over 6 there, because that's 1 pi. So if I want 5 pi over 6, I want 1 sixth less. So you can do that. So that's two ways of thinking about it. You can either convert it to degrees, degrees, which you say 30 times 5, 150 degrees. Or you can say, this is 6 pi over 6, and I want to remove 1 pi over 6, so 1 sixth of it. So this is how far our little Suzette has gone. They're going backwards. I guess. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay, because we want to just find the length. Okay, so you know that the radius is equal to 9 meters, and you know that the angle is 5 pi over 6. So we said at the beginning of the lesson that the angle is equal to the arc length divided by the radius. So I have theta and this. I'm trying to solve for a. So the arc length is equal to, you can always do a little ratio like this again, radius times theta divided by 1. So radius times theta. And I know my radius is 9, and I know my theta is 5 pi over 6. And if I multiply those together, I would get 45 pi over 6. Now, I want this in the length, a length to the nearest tenth of a meter. And so you're not going to say pi, right? 45 pi over 6. What kind of length is that? Pi has a number. Pi is approximately 3.14, isn't it? So um, I always encourage my students to use their calculators at this point so that they're using the complete value for pi. So now you can see pi here nice and easily. So that times 45 divided by 6, and I get approximately equal to 23, nearest tenth of a meter, that's one decimal place, so approximately 23.6 meters. Okay, so I hope that helps you with your um, radian measures. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, yeah, hope you have a good day. It's Thanksgiving weekend today, and I'm doing this for you on a Sunday while my turkey is cooking. All the best to everyone, and thanks again to Christopher from Greenville, Ohio, for sending me this awesome, brilliant pink. Just look at this, watch. Look at this. Snap. Bye for now.